So that shit rolls downhill. You know, it's the same. Shit rolls downhill. So watch. So if I were to take this right here, right? Like this shit. And you make a hill. Right? When you take this shit, this shit rolls down the hill. So that's where the saying goes. You know, the shit rolls downhill. I think, um, and I'm just gonna put my personal opinion on, on like, not, not my personal, but my point of view. The reason why I would say my point of view because I, I see both sides now. Before I bought, I bought shoes, $200 shoes. The same, I, and I have these shoes, these boots on, $200 what boots. Shoes? What are these boots? These what are, are these are area uh, square toe boots. Okay. So my, my white Reeboks up there, man, they, they look nice. Yeah. They look real good. I only use them. Yo, it ain't nothing like a white pair of kicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, feel good. It make you feel fresh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Confident. So it make you feel good. But when I bought it, I was like, all I was thinking about is they started no problem. But when I bought these and I took them to the ranch, right? They were talking about, did you get you some good boots? I was like, yeah, I got you some good boots. I go there and she was like, um, she gives me this number and it's a boot repair shop. Mm -hmm. I said, and I'm like, okay, cool. And she's like, the good thing about those boots, cowboy boots, because we were talking about the same thing is that when these get worn down, all I have to do is pay ten dollars to twenty dollars, and they'll repair it. Like oh, re, yeah. they'll restitch it. What do they call those people? Um, uh, they make shoes, yeah. tapestries. Uh, the co cobblers. That's what they're called, cobblers. Cobblers. Okay. I think they're called cobblers. I'd have to double check. That's that's pretty cool. Like cobbler. Yeah. I didn't even know that was like the damn name. Oh my gosh, yes. I feel like it's a cobbler maker, and they 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 do shoe, and I don't know if the word is tapestry. It's almost like an upholstery, but they do it with shoes. So they replace the soles, they can replace the leather, they oh, can change legit. the color of your shoe. Yeah. But it has to be a good quality shoe to do yeah. that. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. That's but cool. No, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I can take it to a cobbler. They'll resole it, restitch it, redo everything. You know, repair the leather if it needs repairing, and um, all for like twenty bucks. Which is now, a nice price when you think about some two hundred dollars shoes exactly, that you gotta go rebuy. <laughs> exactly, and there's a purpose for these. One of those horses step on my foot; it's hard enough where it doesn't mess up my toe. Um, the shit, the purpose of it being flat is like when I go out there, there's the shit doesn't stick to the bottom; it just slides off. You know what I'm saying? With these, I'm like doing work with them. There's a purpose of what I'm doing with them, and then, you know, if they mess up, it only costs ten bucks for twenty bucks for me to redo it. Now my other two hundred dollars shoes, they serve. I barely wear them. Like. Yeah once every blue moon and that's when i'm dressing up and yeah. now that i'm older with a family i don't really go out too much right. you know what i'm saying but then if they start wearing out mm -hmm. either you pay a sh uh, like to repair one of those stores is, is gonna be costly you yeah, know what i'm saying for sure you just or might as well buy the whole you shoe buy, you buy a whole new 200 or buy shoe. the new version it's like buying the iphone 10 to, to the 12 yeah right? you buy a whole new 200 dollars shoe and like by comparison it's like if I would have had went to that ranch and like learned to get these shoes and the benefit of getting these boots because in the long run you'll yeah. save money. Well, and I would like for you to speak to really just how you even got to this point because even when we were at the ranch today, like you told a really good story about how this was part of your dream, right? Yeah. And it was something that you created for yourself. Yeah. So if you don't mind speaking to that a little bit too. It's crazy because you grow up like me. I grew up not having the best things you know so we had to make things stretch mm -hmm. and then now i go to I have the horse i'm at the ranch and i see how hard these people work mm. and i like that you know because they value the dollar and since they value the dollar so much they're going to invest in shoes yeah. that will save them money in the long run sure. that serves a purpose and it's not to impress anybody do you know what point in your life that actually changed for you i feel like i can say specifically when I had gotten to such a rock bottom that I had to start thinking differently. Yeah. For some people, they have to worry about money to the point where they have to become mindful of how they're spending. Yeah. It's like the goal is to get to a place where it's like, I, I can just swipe my car, right? Yeah. But you hope that you are graceful and you have this humility about yourself when you are spending your money. Yep. So that way it's more like, I'm, I'm not only making myself better, but I'm making everything else yeah. around me better too. So like that turning point for me was, was it, it's, it's going to sound stupid, too. And not stupid, but no, it's going to sound different. No, exactly. And, you know, and different, different is not bad. Like, yeah, we were right. taught to think that. You know what I'm saying? So, it was actually a book that I, I that when I went, look, and the funny, the way I got that book was crazy. 
because I go to fucking David Buster's and I'm like, baby, I want to read a book. <laughs> just out of I, I nowhere. Got, I've had that moment before. Yeah, I just want to read a book. I need to read something. But because <laughs> I've never read books before, but mm-hmm. I need to start somewhere. So we go. She's like, oh, yeah. She was excited because she likes to read. Every fucking loves to read. Yes. And I'm the only one that does it. So that I go to. And I have the whole house operating on the same way. You know what I'm saying? Thing. And we go to Barnes & Noble. And I'm like walking around like I'm just like don't know where the heck I'm supposed to start. And I'm in this aisle because it was like self improvement books, mm-hmm. you know. I, and, and look, it, I've been there. And, it, and it's <laughs> like there. and they categorize it like financial. This or this. And I should I ran into this lady and I'm like excuse me excuse me excuse me. So I had to say excuse me like three times because we kept on running into each other. And she goes, hey, you know, what are you looking for? Because mm. we've been in the same aisle. I'm like, I'm looking for self-improvement book, you know, but I don't, I've never read, read it before, but I want to start. Yo, that's a really great conversation to have with a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that's what, and, that's, and I was like, I was legit laughing, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my way of not feeling vulnerable is to make this to laugh. That is a moment of vulnerability. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because I didn't want to appear stupid neither. So I'm like laughing. I'm like, <laughs> And, like, she's laughing and she's talking, too. And Jenny's at the end, you know what I'm saying? And she goes, you know something? You should try this one. This was my first book. And it was, it was uh, The Compound Effect by Daryl Hardy. Oh, my gosh. I need to read that book. Yeah. We should, we should do a virtual book club on it. Man, that would be cool because that is the, what changed my perspective on how I need to cheat my money. I, this book, <clears throat> prior, before I read, prior to reading that book, I was like, me and Jenny were fighting a lot. Mm. Because I was putting blame on certain things. I was mad because I didn't have no money. Uh, because I felt like child support was taking everything away from me while I was working. So I had like a lot of anger. Oh, yeah. I can I imagine was, the, stress, the stressors that that right. brings. Yes. So I read this book, The Compound Effect. And he was just raw. This this dude, this guy is just raw because he doesn't sugarcoat anything. And I like that's what I needed because he was like, right, if you're reading this book, you're probably... Uh, try to find something to better your life and you're like but I want to start by telling you this everything that you did is your fault and I kept on reading I was like okay he's like it's your fault and he said everything is a decision Every where you're at currently right now is based off of all the decisions okay. that you made into, in your life to For get sure. to this very moment and the question becomes how conscious are you of some of the decisions you've been making yeah. in the moment you become conscious that is when you can enact change in your life so, yeah. so then he like gives you these tasks for like to do financially like track everything you spend like every down to the last five cents track it and i did that and, i need to take that advice and, and <laughs> it actually helped me out like I'm, i could do saving better but then he gets to the point about like being angry and and just yes. people are just not naturally happy because of where they're at but they have to take responsibility the moment so he you so do, you can change so yeah. he like write down everything that you're mad about so i do exactly as instructed boom 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 and he said i uh, he brought him on one sheet of paper each, so I did that. Boom, 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 boom. And my number one was child support. Mm. You and that's a big thing to want to address in yourself. Like, why are you in a position yeah, to so, where you have to be paying exactly. child support? <laughs> so he's like, write everything, what you're feeling. And then he started making you dissect what you're you saying. So what I got from the debate, the child support, I, what, I, what I got to is like, the reason why... I have child support is because I was doing stuff that I wasn't supposed to be doing mm-hmm. at the at the at that age. You know what I'm saying? I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing that because mm. I, I I I knew I should have been, you know, at, at the age of like seventeen, eighteen. I shouldn't be like going out there just having re- you know random sex with people. You know what I'm saying? No, and I, I yeah, it goes back to my question. It's kind of like, do you feel like, and if you don't want to have this conversation, we yeah. don't have to have it. But do you feel like? that conversation should have been had with a parent figure or specifically a man i don't uh, this is this specific situation no matter no matter who it is someone should have had a conversation right. but the conversation i just want to let you know is I, I don't think it was nothing anybody ha- could tell me because i already knew that that's not something i'm supposed to be doing out of wedlock you knew it innately yeah you know what i'm saying well, yeah, there's a social social part of why you felt like you shouldn't be having sex out of wedlock. It speaks to spirituality and it speaks to just what people think is right. To yeah, do, well, right? and it was more like my mom taught me that, like that's mm-hmm. what you're supposed to do. So I'm like, I knew I shouldn't be doing this, but I wanted to do it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. And I did it, and that's the reason why I had a baby and I have child support. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? 
I had to take responsibility. It's like, yeah. I can't be mad. I can't be, because like I said, I was being mad and I was fighting with Jenny, blaming everything on everything. But at the end of the day, why am I mad at other people when it's something that I did to myself? Right. It's the choices that you've made. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's everything that you've it, done. Everything here. that I did. <laughs> Back to what you said, everything yes, that you've done. So he was like, that's an accountability that not everybody is ready to have, though. Yeah. So he was like, you, he, he, he's like, you have two choices. You can either continue to be mad, mm-hmm. or you can find a way around to live the life that you want. Right. Except you know the, the choice that you have in your own life. Exactly. I left by uh, the the job at the time. I left it, and what you call it, I found better paid jobs. Yes. And that's what I was looking for. And then I was also looking for what do I need to do to get that job. And with this book, it's, t- it's all about every, every the compound effect. Everything has an effect on something else yeah. that, can, that that eventually will get bigger. So if you if you like if you're gonna if you want a better paying job, you have to do X, Y, and Z. And if you at least apply yourself at X, Y, and Z, you'll mm-hmm. eventually get to your end goal. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so it is all about those decisions. So I started doing it, and now I'm in this good position that I am now. That was my turning point, that book. I learned that, like, I don't need to spend $200, $300 on some shoes mm-hmm. to look good for society that could care less about what I, you know, I, I, like, at the end of the day, they could, they don't care about you. No, 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 no. They don't care what you look like. They, the yeah. right kind of friend. Yeah. And this is the lesson that you've been teaching yeah. so well to Avery. It's like, look, if a person is treating you right like, exactly. from, and leading from a place of love and from the heart, like I can be around you. But yeah. like, if anything else is clouding your yeah. decision making towards me, like we have to have a conversation about yeah. it if I value you enough to be in my yeah. life. Yeah, you know, like these, like the, you don't have to impress people. Now I get to, I realize that buying these boots were more beneficial because it's going to cost... You know, the quality of these, it, even though I may not look like the cool people, my friends don't care that I'm, Yo, I look, look like that cool. cool to me. I wish people would talk like this about, you know what I'm saying, like accountability and like values and qualities and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like that. But a lot of people, I feel like they don't talk to each other because they don't want to seem like their life is not as in order the way society wants it to be in order, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So they get kind of embarrassed or shy and stuff like that. But if, you my friend. I have you there because I'm comfortable to tell you anything in For my sure. life. And so if I can't have, have a conversation and be vulnerable like that around you, then why do I even have you my friend? But it takes you a while to get there because a lot of people have to acknowledge their own baggage, even in friendships. Like we always think that some people bring a lot into relationships with their intimate partner partners, but you can bring it into friendships too. Yeah, and it's oh, like, sure. you know, But I think that speaks to the closeness of the relationship. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going to be in it, it needs to be a genuine moment. Yeah, it has to be genuine. It has to be. Because I feel comfortable. I could tell you, Jackie, Mike, any one of our friends, like, my deepest secrets. And I'm not really... And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be scared that one of y'all gonna use it to hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just not the type of people that I've... I keep around me. I don't put on my glasses. And, man, my vision is 20-20. I swear to God. Like, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, no, it really is. (laughs) God damn, we can be Yeah, I feel like my... Look, I was... My tone changed. (laughs) Did you hear it? (laughs) And she got... started getting real slow and bell on radio voice. You was getting serious. Yo. Oh, my goodness. We go. I gotta definitely go. (laughs) Oh, shit. Because we gonna go forever. (laughs) (laughs) No, look, thank you so much.